What I was interested in listening to in your uh, story is that you do come out of any cancer journey as a slightly different person. Mm. And I think that what worries some cancer people is that they try to be exactly the same as they were before. And this isn't possible. You are a different person, mm. but it doesn't mean that you aren't still able to really enjoy your life. What, what are the main changes in your attitude, I would say, more than anything else that you feel? It, it's strange. I, I always thought I was quite a tolerant person yeah. anyway. Um, well, well, obviously, I'm, uh, I wake up in the morning and I'm glad to be alive. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. But some days you don't feel too good. No. Um, and uh, you struggle a bit with that, <laughs> that statement to yourself. But the hardest thing I find um, is, let's say if I go into my local pub, yeah. And, um, you know, you're at the bar having a drink. Now, most people around you uh, are just living normal lives. You know, they've never gone through cancer and things no. like that. And they moan about the most simplistic thing. Absolutely. The yeah. weather yes. or something <laughs> like that, you know. And I think, well, that, that's not actually important. No. And I find it very difficult to not t turn around and say, well, does it actually matter? There's a lot Doesn't worse things. But that's because you've been able to put things in perspective. I mean, I'm, I was probably the same myself. I think what you do after any journey that you've gone through is you reevaluate and things that really matter, matter. So there are positives that come out of it. I certainly think that you know, it's not something you would wish on anyone, but you can come out a more positive person and look at life in a different light. Well, I've, I, okay, um, what, I'll give you an example of something, right? Yeah. Recently, we've just had the Paralympics. Absolutely. And I, I watched the opening thing. Yes. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned I've, I've lost my leg. Yes. So now I'm deemed to be a disabled person. So I was watching it, and um, um, all these disabled athletes coming in, and and I, I was crying because how how brilliant are those people Absolutely. to achieve what they're Amazing. achieving with their disabilities? And really, it's the same f for me, probably the same for you, going through what we've gone through with the cancers and that and the radical treatment we've had and we've come out the other end of it yes and no no end of people say to me in my pub don't get me wrong i'm not in there all the time <laughs> but when i'm in the pub um and now i'm walking again with my false leg and they know all about my bone marrow transplant and things um quite a few people have said you you know you're an inspiring person I can understand that. I think that's because true. I'm not unhappy. No. I'm always, I've always got a smile on my face, and so I'm a, I'm a normal person. Apart from obviously, I'm Absolutely. I'm walking a bit funny. I think that's probably what's come across a lot in the Paralympics is that everybody is normal. They're just different and they are achieving things to the best of their capabilities. It's absolutely <coughs> inspiring, hasn't it? Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, I'm a changed person. I can't... Yes. I, in fact, when I was drive, driving here, as an example, there was a guy running down the road, and um, I, I looked at him, and I knew I could never do that again. But I accepted that. Yes. And, you know, I can accept things easier now. You, you were saying, I believe, earlier on that there were certain side effects, one of which I believe um, patients could be interested in with regards to your nails, etc. Yeah, I, yeah I, I have, as I explained before, something called graft versus host disease. disease. Right. Donor is a graft bit and I'm the host. Okay. So it's like a battle is going on. Yeah, now, as I said before, it, in my case, it can affect people in different ways. It can affect people that get really dry eyes. Um, s sometimes it can attack 
um, parts of the, the, the organs right. and things like that. Now for me, it's, uh, it, it's affected my calcium levels in my body. Right, so that's the So the nails. nails are made of calcium. Absolutely. And this is absolutely true. When I go for a pee, yeah, I'm peeing out urine, but I'm peeing out calcium as well. Right. So when I pee it and it goes into the toilet bowl, there's like a throth on top of the... Yeah. Like a, like, like a glass of beer, <laughs> really. Good strong but, beer. But, but it's because I'm peeing out the calcium. Right. And obviously he nails the calcium. And this is a, a fairly common side effect, is it? Not, not, not everyone loses their nails. No, but, but it is... <coughs> And it doesn't stop you doing or achieving anything with your No, the, or, the hardest thing about losing your nails is if you drop something you can't on a flat use, surface, yes. you can't pick it up. Yes, Because you don't realise what you can do with nails. Yeah, absolutely. You know. But then also it's attacked my skin tissue on my legs. And you have so many layers of skin. Yes. So your legs are so thick, whatever it is. But a lot of my skin layers have come off a bit like shedding yeah but it oversheds right to a point where if i was to bang my leg on a table or something um it would form a blood blister mm. and then burst and some you can suffer from ulcers right you do take a particular tablet to kind of stop that happening as such or try and keep it under control in my case it's called tacolimus right so i'm on that for the rest of my life unfortunately for me um with my railway work i ended up working abroad um traveling around the world and um even after my bone marrow transplant. Amazing. Yeah, it wasn't going to stop me. No, that's very But unfortunately, I went to Romania and I was at, having a meeting with the directors of railway and we went to this restaurant for a meal to finish the meetings off. And when I walked in, it was badly lit and I didn't see this little coffee table oh, and I fell over it mm. and it took all the skin off the front of my leg, right. my left leg and um, it never recovered and developed into uh, a tumour and that's, how and that's why I had, I had to lose my leg. So it really was a, an accident? Uh, it was but, an accident, yeah. But one that would have affected somebody else differently than it obviously did you? Well yeah, I mean it's not going to happen to everyone is it? No, everyone... no. But you've obviously had the strength to get through it and obviously you're now managing to walk very well. Uh, you can, I mean I I don't know what you what happened to you exactly and how you felt, but I've always uh, had a positive attitude to things. You know, I've got to get on with things, me. Definitely, I can understand that. And with regards to your daily life, I find I try and set goals or say, well, in the morning I'll do this, and in the afternoon I'll do this, and in the evening I'll do this, and if I do two out of three, I've had a good day. Do you find you live each day or...? I never, I never set goals for myself, I just do what I want to do. And you're finding that's keeps yeah. you going? I don't need, I just try and be a normal person. That's brilliant. You know, because if I, if I, no disrespect to the way you do things, but if that's I try and do, different. <laughs> if I try and set goals like you do, it would always remind me that uh, I'm having to do it because I'm not that well or whatever. I understand what you're saying. Whereas completely. I try and throw that bit out the window. Yeah. And be as normal as I can. I'm a realist. I know I'm not 100% and I never will be. But I try and live up to whatever percentage I can get to. I can understand that, yes. Um, with regards to your twin, who I believe was very instrumental in obviously... S saving my life. Saving your life. Um, how did she feel about her involvement? I mean, was there any shock horror at the beginning or was it immediately, I'm here? She's my twin. Absolutely. And uh, no hesitations. Oh, that's brilliant. Where, and where does your twin sister live? She lives in Thermiston. Oh, not too far away. It's well. a strange thing having a twin. Um, Can you imagine? We don't see each other that frequent. But we know where each other 
Yes, you've oh, got that sense. Yeah. Yes, and purpose. um you know, we don't really I ring her up now and again, she rings me and that's enough. We don't need to say a lot to each other. No, you've got that complete con co contact. Yeah. yeah, I can understand that. And when I when I had to go in to have my leg taken off, because of all my past history with uh, all the treatment and things, obviously I had to have anaesthetic. Yes. And that was very risky. I can understand. And they warned me about it. And she came, uh, my partner came when I was having the operation. I came round, everything was fine. And then unfortunately I got one of these hospital superbug things. Oh gosh. And I ended up going in a coma. And my family was, I didn't know this because I was in a coma, but my family was recording twice. And they were told, he's only got 1% chance of getting through the night. Okay, now, my sister never left my bedside. Oh. All the way through, and it was about two weeks. Amazing. So that's our well, relationship. She gave, she gave you all her strength. She did. Well, yeah. Obviously, meant to be, weren't you? You fought a good fight many a time and come out the other end. Now, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to uh, say this bit to you, but <coughs> when you go through all the treatment, yes, and you come out the other side, so you do question certain things, and my biggest question after going through all the bone marrow and, and other bits and pieces. I got pneumonia twice, getting over that, and then losing my leg, and then being told when I came round that we nearly died twice. When I got out of hospital in that, I kept asking myself, why do I keep surviving? Why me? Why me, yeah. What is the purpose of me keep surviving? It was meant to be. Well, I went, I, I went to see my consultant for a normal appointment on the bone, bone marrow unit. Um, and he was in his room and he'd got some student nurses with him. And I w went in and he said, do you mind me sitting here? I said, no, not at all. And he said, um, do you have any questions? And he expected me to say, yeah, well, it's about my leg and... Yes. You know, things like that. But I didn't. I said, I just have one question. Why do I keep surviving? What's the reason for me to keep surviving? And what did he say? He said, let me tell you something, Kevin. Someone who had had a bone marrow transplant, like you, from myeloma, um, and then we're losing your leg and getting what you got then, nearly dying, 99.9% of patients would have died. You didn't. And all I can say to you, Kevin, is there's something inside you. Yeah. There's a strength inside you. I can't answer the question other than to say that to you. But that does show anybody listening that however bad things might appear to be or they can look in the mirror and think, oh God, I can't go through another day. Look what you've gone through and you've come out the other side smiling. So it is always possible to have hope, however small the percentage. I, I'm not a religious person no. in any way, okay? Uh, but I know when I was on the bone marrow unit and I was having my transplant, well, I'd had it and I felt really low, really poorly. My wife had been to see me and she went, and it's the first time I've ever prayed. And do you know what I prayed for? I, I prayed that, please God, let me see my children again and let me see them grow up. And you've been able to and do And I've done that. it, yeah. And so. I mean, that is the biggest thing of all, isn't it, really? Mm. I think any parent would say that. And you've managed to see them grow into men, which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Now, can I tell you about my marriage? Of course. Do you want to know about that? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think it is great, first of all, before you, you say that, that you have obviously had a strong relationship, which for, for reasons that weren't in your control did end up in a breakup. 
but you have been able to remain friends and you have now moved on and, and have another love in your life. Again, that in itself means you don't have to have guilt about what's happened, but it's because you are presumably a different person than you were. And obviously when you shared certain experiences, it changes the relationship. Yeah. So how would you put that into? Well, okay. Let me just say this first as a statement. The day my wife left me, I still loved her the same as the first day I met her. Right. So you can understand the power of my love for of her. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <coughs> now, 50% of me getting over my bone marrow transplant, all the treatment and everything else, was my wife. And her support, yes. And her said support. That in your story, yeah, that, yes. that was a big thing. Um, I got out of hospital um, and you try and get back into a normal life. This is in the early stages. Of course. But it's very, very difficult. Yes, I can imagine. And Okay, you're on all kinds of tablets. That affects your sex life. Bound to. That's out of your control. Absolutely. Um, and a marriage, part of your marriage is built on that. Absolutely, I can understand the yeah. difference, yes. So that wasn't happening, and that's not down, that's not, you, you, it's not down to you, it's down to all your medication and everything. Down to but you, you, you just put up with it, and anyway, I had changed. Uh, when I first got out, I, I, I you know, I, I, I wasn't positive about things when I first got out. So you were probably quite hard work then at home. I wasn't, I wasn't sort of, I never get angry. I never get, I, I never ever argue. I never get angry. All I do is cry. So you were a bit depressed. I was depressed, yes, yeah. Which is understandable. And, um, yeah, I, it was boring. For her, it was boring. I can understand. Suddenly that. this, you know, high-powered husband that she'd got and things was As a, laying on the settee at home doing nothing. Yes, it's a difficult thing to adjust to. But the biggest thing, I think, for, for Kath was she had to cope with my sons and yes, bring my sons up. as well. Yeah. And I, I mean, we, she, we were always honest with our sons. We always, if they ever asked us a question, we would never tell them a lie. No. We'd be careful how we say it. Yes. To, yeah. Because obviously Ben was that much older. Than, uh, so we said it in a different way to Ben than we did to Joe. So we were never, we never lied, but she had to always pick up the consequences of the way they felt yes. when I was at hospital. Yes. But, and the other thing, was because I've got such a big family, they continuously rang her up to find out. So she was <coughs> the instigator at like, of everything. Every day, every yeah, day. I can understand that. Well, big my sib siblings rang her. Yes. She spent all day with me and she was trying to have a rest at night. And she'd have to talk it through again. So we en she ended up putting, getting a answer machine put in. <laughs> Right. Yes. And um, also, I sort of talked to my siblings and said, "Look, why can't Kath talk to just one of you, and then, and then you, you pass it around?" It. Sounds but like that, that didn't seem to work. Oh so she had to put up with all that pressure. It's a lot of pressure. You know. So everything was building up, and it's like a layer, and it was another layer, another layer, another layer, until I had my fiftieth birthday. Just before it, Kath said to me. Because it, it was a major goal for me to get to 50. Yes, I can understand that. And Kath said to me, what do you want to do s to celebrate your birthday? Sh shall we go on a cruise or something like that? And I said, no, I don't want to go on a cruise. I want a big party where I can get all my friends, family, nurses, doctors. And they can see how I am yeah. now. Well, it was to say thank you to them, actually. Absolutely, I can believe that. So anyway, I had that. It was a fantastic party. And um, uh, that was November. In February, the next year, um, something happened and my wife just broke down. 
literally broke down. Well, perhaps it had been building up it over had been building the stress up. she had been under. And it, that's it, what we were saying, how families need as much support as the yeah. person going through the cancer. It had been building up, and, I, and my neighbour, she, 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 she went in the garden and she was screaming in the garden. And my neighbour heard her, and Jill came round and calmed her down, and Kath just said, I can't cope anymore. I've got to get out of it. She probably felt the everyday pressure yeah. that she'd had for a very long time. And then, then what happened was, um, she was okay, but we were going to this wedding, our best friend's daughter's wedding in Oakham, and um, we were driving there, and she just turned around to me says, and said, I'm leaving you, Kevin. What reason did she give you at that time? <clears throat> Well, I said, what? what do you mean, leaving me? Because I need to leave Kevin. She never really gave me a proper answer. She was doing it <coughs> for herself as opposed to, she hadn't stopped loving you, I wouldn't have thought. It doesn't sound like it to me. She sounds like a very caring person. But that she knew that she couldn't cope herself with the life that she'd been leading. And perhaps that was the only way for you to remain friends. I, I knew deep down why it was. Uh, but it wasn't until like a few days later that I, I asked her again. I said, bear in mind, she was my true love. Absolutely, you said. And I did say to her, you know, why are you leaving me, Kath? You know, after everything we've gone through. And she said, as I said before, she said, I love you, Kevin, but I don't love you the same. I've been your carer, not your lover. It was probably, yes. And I she understood that. I understood. Yes. She was honest with me. Yes. And even though it really upset me, and when she did leave, I got myself in a right mess. I fell to pieces. But you got through that as well. Yeah, I started to drink. What's well, this? I got. Up the road. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we that was in my old house. Uh, this was a different one. Yeah, I started to drink. I never paid any bills, I got myself in a right financial mess. I just didn't know what to do with anything. So what, what brought you out of that and made you the person okay, what, you what happened now? was, I got an infection and I ended up in the hospital and um, Kath never came to see me. And I, I, she came once, like at the end of the week for an hour. Um, Maybe it was shock therapy. She wanted you to be able to cope on your well, own. Well, that is absolutely true. Because it was shock therapy before, yeah. wasn't it? And I think and, and, it but, like but, that. But also, when I was in there, I, trying to get over this infection, I actually broke down myself. And... Because um, it had all built up. It sounds like it. And... Anyway, she never came to see me till the last hour, basically, on the last day that I was in there. <coughs> I did say to you, why, why didn't you come any earlier, Kath? And she'd been away for a few days, so. But I went, I went to sleep that night. I, I woke up the next day and I thought, right, Kevin, you can't carry on You've got to like get this. things differently. Pick yourself up and start all over again. Mm which is exactly what I did. It certainly sounds like it. Yeah. It and now I live in a bungalow in Fleckner. I have this partner and life's good. Oh, that's a very good thing to hear. And yet you are still able to, to have a friendship with your wife, you were telling me before. My, my wife is my best friend. Which I think she, is she has, she has a She has a partner and he's been with her, she's been with her for quite a while. And I have to say, when I was really low, I nearly hit him twice when I met him. But that must make you feel better anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he's miles bigger than me though, he could have really <laughs> pasted me, but there you go. I never did hit him though. Um, he's a good guy, he looks after her. He's, um, he's very good to my sons as well. Which is very important. So, uh, yeah, it's, everything seems to have slotted into the correct box now. 
And I think I'm going on the right di in the right direction it as certainly well. Certainly sounds like it because it shows that whatever life throws at you, and sometimes you'd think that they were insurpassable uh, problems, they aren't because you're sitting here now talking to me. Yeah. So I, I certainly also wish you very well for the future, and I'm sure it's going to be a good one because you've got through so much. You can only carry on the same way. Well, I like I said about this tunnel thing. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. It's sometimes hard to get there, but it's there. To get into the light, you know, if you keep working at it, keep po being positive, you get there. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much.